Could life on Mars ever be economically viable? It's been over 50 years now since humans last set foot on another world during the Apollo moon landings of the late 1960s and early 1970s. In that time, the dream of exploring Mars has captured our imaginations through countless works of science fiction. However, no return trips to the moon have occurred, and we've yet to send humans to Mars at all. Why has no government or private enterprise made a sustained effort to establish a permanent human presence beyond Earth? The answer lies at the heart of our topic. Economics Without a clear path to long-term self-sufficiency, the immense costs of operating off-world can't be justified. As we'll explore in more detail, transporting goods, materials, and even people between Earth and Mars presents extraordinary challenges and expenses with today's technologies. Setting up infrastructure to support life requires vast investments, but currently, there are no obvious resources or productive activities in space that could generate enough returns to sustain colonies. We'll look at some of the ideas that have been proposed, like asteroid mining or utilizing futuristic fuels like helium-3. We'll also discuss factors like how energy collection or manufacturing in space's unique conditions could eventually provide competitive advantages. By considering the resources required, transportation limitations, colony proposals, and emerging technologies, our goal is to assess if and when life on Mars will transition from science fiction to reality. Between 1969 and 1972, six crews of American astronauts took pioneering journeys to the moon through NASA's Apollo program. Steeped in the space race rivalry of the Cold War era, these landmark missions marked tremendous technological achievements in safely transporting men hundreds of thousands of miles from home and returning them safely. However, after the triumphant planting of old glory on the lunar surface by Apollo 11, subsequent exploration was not sustained long-term as many had hoped. Only three more missions made it to the moon's surface by 1972. Since then, no humans have ventured farther than low Earth orbit or the ISS. So what prompted this abrupt end to furthering our reach into the surrounding solar system? The reality is that without a clear economic rationale or path to self-funding independence, the enormous financial costs required could not be permanently justified. For the Apollo missions, National prestige and the geopolitical rivalry with the Soviet Union provided enough motivation. However, relying on these factors alone is not sustainable for long-term space development. Establishing a permanently crewed outpost requires immense investments just to maintain basic living standards off-world before even considering productive activities. Without accessible local resources or industries capable of generating revenue, continuous subsidies would be needed indefinitely. This economic basis is the missing piece that's prevented resumed moon exploration and missions to Mars from materializing until now. One idea that has been proposed to potentially address the economic justification is tapping into the vast resources that exist elsewhere in the solar system. It's estimated that asteroids and other celestial bodies contain trillions of dollars worth of precious metals and minerals in their composition. Gold, platinum, iron nickel, and water ice are just some of the commercially valuable materials abundant in space. However, the immense difficulties and costs associated with transporting these resources back from their origin present a huge barrier. Considering estimates that it costs several million dollars just to launch a single kilogram into low Earth orbit, harvesting and returning asteroid resources is prohibitively expensive with current technologies. Even for extremely valuable payloads, the mining and transport costs would exceed the final market value by many orders of magnitude. This makes asteroids essentially inaccessible sources of raw commodities for now. Another alternative that's been proposed is helium-3, an isotopic form of helium that could potentially fuel experimental nuclear fusion reactors if achieved on an industrial scale. 
The moon is a promising target for helium-3 mining, as it's relatively abundant in lunar regolith. However, practical fusion power remains an advanced scientific goal, with major challenges still to overcome in developing reactors capable of producing a net energy gain. Jet fusion in Cullum in Oxfordshire. It is, say the team here, a landmark for this technology. These results are really significant because what we've managed to demonstrate inside Jet is that we can create a mini sun, the right kind of mini sun, hold it there for a sustained period and get really good performance levels, which is a major step forward in terms of our quest to get to, to fusion power plants. Creating mini stars inside reactors like this is one of the greatest technological challenges humanity has ever faced. Get it right and it holds out the potential for producing almost unlimited supplies of energy pretty much forever. Commercial fusion reactors are likely many decades away, meaning lunar helium-3 also cannot presently provide an economic use case. Unless significant reductions in space transportation expenses are achieved, neither celestial resources nor exotic fuels provide near-term solutions. While asteroids and lunar mining present substantial technical barriers, one major asset that space offers in abundance, with no transportation required, is solar energy. With no night and minimal atmospheric scattering, the potential for harnessing sunlight in space vastly exceeds what's possible on Earth's surface. It's estimated that a solar power station positioned in geosynchronous orbit could collect roughly 200 times more energy per square meter than a similar station on the ground. Capturing this energy is the concept behind proposals for technologies like satellite-based solar farms or space-based solar power. Envision designs involve vast arrays of next-generation solar panels and orbits synchronizing with the speed of rotation, where the energy is then beamed back to receivers on Earth as microwave radiation. Private firms are investing in demonstrating the feasibility of assembling solar arrays, the size of states to collect all the energy needs of countries. Now a plan to beam electricity, electricity wirelessly from space to power millions of homes could be edging a step closer. The European Space Agency is to consider funding a three-year study called Solaris to see if having huge solar farms in space could work and be cost-effective. Our science correspondent Paolo Ghosh sent this report from Munich. If such systems could be realized commercially, the scale of accessible solar power in space has the potential to enable indefinite economic and population growth. By removing resource constraints on energy, many related industries could theoretically be expanded without practical limits as well. It's not science fiction, that it's not just something on paper or in the lab, that it's ready to be deployed at a small scale. And of course, the challenge with applying this to space-based solar power is extending that scale and that power by a dramatic amount. And that will take some time. It's a huge challenge, of course. This could help address the need to support expanding populations both on Earth and eventually also in space-based settlements if the costs of utilizing orbital solar power continuously decline with further innovation and mass production techniques. Of course, Turning this vision into a reality faces tremendous technical, economic, and political hurdles. But there's a possibility for space-based solar to eventually provide access to a scale of renewable energy far exceeding what's available on our planet's surface alone. And that in turn could help drive down barriers currently preventing permanent human settlements in space from achieving self-sufficiency. While delivering energy from space shows tremendous long-term potential, another avenue that holds promise is leveraging the unique environmental conditions afforded by microgravity for specialized industrial processes. Currently on board the International Space Station, experiments are demonstrating how manufacturing certain advanced materials can be enhanced without Earth's gravitational forces interfering. One example is ultra-pure Ziblin optical fibers being produced on the ISS for experimental communications applications. In gravity, tiny imperfections naturally form as the glass cools, limiting how far signals can travel through fiber optic cables before needing amplification. However, 
Fibers created in microgravity exhibit unprecedented clarity, potentially allowing transmission over intercontinental or interplanetary distances without repeaters. Beyond fibers, some pharmaceuticals and microelectronics have also shown benefits relating to purity, structural uniformity, and properties when developed in low gravity. Theoretically, this could translate to higher product yields and performance. Some proposals have even explored manufacturing possibilities like launch vehicles or large space structures that may one day be constructed in orbit from prefabricated components. While these examples demonstrate microgravity's capabilities, actually building an orbital manufacturing industry faces enormous costs that don't currently outweigh terrestrial alternatives. Mass production would require frequent and inexpensive cargo launches, as well as overcoming the challenges of working in space's hostile conditions. For the foreseeable future, specialized niche products are more likely to be the focus if reductions can be achieved in overall mission expenses. But as technologies progress, microgravity manufacturing may yet contribute to balanced economic activities for space settlements. When assessing the economic challenges of living and working in space long term, one unavoidable factor is the immense cost of transportation required to support such off-world operations. By some estimates, the current expense of launching a single kilogram of payload into low Earth orbit runs in excess of $10,000 using conventional expendable launch vehicles. Transporting larger payloads capable of sustaining human crews balloons those numbers up enormously. For instance, NASA's space launch system aimed at returning astronauts to the moon has a per launch price tag estimated at over $2 billion. Simply transporting vital life support consumables, building materials, machinery, and other necessities for establishing an initial colony on Mars would tally expenses reaching into the many tens if not hundreds of billions of dollars or more utilizing current technology. Some private firms are working to revolutionize this picture through initiatives like fully and partially reusable rockets designed for multiple flights with low refurbishment needs between launches. SpaceX's Falcon 9 and planned Starship vehicles represent major progress, having successfully recovered first stage cores for significant cost savings potential. Unless revolutionary new propulsion systems emerge, Physics also dictate fundamental limits difficult to circumvent, like the tyranny of the rocket equation requiring immense amounts of fuel just to lift further fuel. Altogether, this implies transportation costs are likely to remain the primary long-pole obstacle inhibiting permanence in space for the foreseeable future, barring unforeseen disruptions or huge technological leaps. Private ventures like SpaceX talk of sending up to 1 million people to Mars in the coming decades. But their estimates still foresee passengers paying upwards of half a million dollars per ticket. It's clear that establishing permanent settlements on Mars or beyond poses extraordinary economic hurdles with today's technologies and understanding. The immense justification and upfront costs associated with transporting, sustaining, and providing resources for expansion simply do not align with presently accessible uses, materials, or energy sources in space. While ideas around accessing celestial minerals, harnessing exotic fuels, and tapping the solar potential of space are intriguing long shots, their viability depends on scientific advances still on the horizon such as fusion power, laser-propelled launch, and scalable microgravity industry. As such, the capabilities and economics of human expansion beyond Earth remain very much open questions for the coming century. Only time will tell whether solutions emerge enabling permanent settlements on Mars. For now, the challenges lay before us, while the potential rewards for those who overcome them are as boundless as the universe itself. To survive. Good night, stars. We've lost all communication. Good night, air. We'll hit the atmosphere in 39 minutes. We won't survive re-entry. But it could. Good night, noises everywhere. challenges await humans. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. 
Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more updates.